Hello again, I am Blunty. So, Starfield, hey? What exactly does it take to run this pig of a game at 4K, maxed out settings, and 60fps? In other words, what do you need to play Starfield at its very best, the most ideal gameplay experience possible? What are the God Mode Starfield PC specs? Well, Rather luckily for me, that brand new build I just put together, the one AMD and ASRock leapt to my rescue with sponsored parts on to help me build, after my existing gaming PC rather inconveniently died, dramatically, just before one of the year's most hotly anticipated games released, because, you know, sod's law. <laughs> that, you need that, is, is what I'm saying. Which is a relief, because the whole gimmick behind my pitch to the Aussie AMD team was to set all this up as the ultimate Starfield rig. Because, of course, AMD are the official partner of Starfield, and they're still doing that thing, by the way, where you get Starfield for free with the purchase of any current GPU or CPU from AMD's stable. And it's the Steam version as well, by the way. The one you're going to want if you want a mod, because in line with my earlier predictions, yes indeed, the Game Pass and Windows Store version of the game uh, is not very mod friendly, at least not right now. Now, for those who didn't see that video yet, I would hope, please go watch it. It's much more than just a simple PC build video. I talk at length about other Starfield ready specs and what you're going to need for this game at various resolutions and whatnot. But if you haven't seen it yet, the short version is this new build burns within its game furnace an AMD Ryzen 7 7700X CPU, an ASRock RX 7900X TX Phantom Gaming 24GB OC GPU, 32GB of Kingston Fury DDR5 RAM, all three of my drives are M.2 PCIe4, and the game drive specifically is as fast as drives can go on PCIe Gen 4. Like, it caps it out, literally. And that is what you need if you want to run Starfield at 4K native 60fps. The gameplay you're watching here is full native 4K at 60fps. No tricks, no FSR upscaling, just pure beast mode, brute force. Now, a little bit later in the video, we are going to talk about FSR a bit and have a look at some back and forth samples at different scaling rates and what that does to performance and what that does to how things look. And I'm also going to compare it to the Xbox version as well. All of that should be timestamped if I've not gone and derped and forgotten to do that. So did I do it? <laughs> now, all of that said, there are two areas in this game I found, at least so far, where even this monstrous rig drops just below 60 FPS at native 4K. Specifically, I'm talking about the Mast District of New Atlantis City, an area I already identified as a performance problem in my video about getting Starfield to run properly on the ROG Ally. And since I made that video, I've also discovered a killer city, the old West-inspired cowboy town, has a similar issue. I wonder if it's to do with just how many NPCs are in those places. I'd turn down the NPC density to find out, but the whole point of this is to run the game maxed out, so no. <laughs> I'll try something different later on. Now, outside of that, I'm pretty comfortably able to peg the game to a 60 FPS V-Sync cap for a liquid smooth, twitch responsive and tack sharp gameplay. It is very glorious. All of the gameplay I'll show you in this video is uncapped though, so we can see just how much overhead there actually is in various parts of the game. Well, except for the Xbox stuff, which I'll show you later, obviously that is capped at 30 FPS because that's just how the Xbox version rolls. Also worth noting, it seems something went quite wrong with my recording software. Despite being set for 4K 60 FPS capture, every damn file it spat out was 30 FPS for some reason. And I didn't notice that until I was importing them for editing. So please forgive that. I'm not doing all of this testing all over again. I want to get back to playing the game as soon as this video is done. But you can clearly see the good old MSI Afterburner overlay there showing you the real frame rate. So apologies that it doesn't look as smooth here on YouTube as it should or indeed does to my own human eyes. Honestly, I don't know what happened. Maybe the Bethesda jank spread itself to other software on my systems. <laughs> Is Bethesda so janky it can make other people's programs go janky? Maybe. 
Anyway, as you can see, one of the things Bethesda managed to get right, finally, was correctly using heavily multi-threaded modern CPUs, something that their previous games have been, frankly, atrocious at. Like, severely bad. Like, the worst in the industry at. <laughs> but now, look at that. All the calls ticking along at healthy utilization. So, with the superbly beastly Ryzen 7 7700X CPU cracking along with plenty of overhead on each and every one of its cores, and running so cool my all-in-one cooler can stay dead quiet too, by the way, our bottleneck here is pure GPU power. It's cracked up to 100% use at basically all times. Shout out to Ezrock, by the way. The cooler on there at 7900XDX Phantom Gaming OC is fantastic. It too stays nice and quiet, even after a full, like, 10 hour, uninterrupted stint running this thirsty game utterly pegged to the wall the entire time, and it didn't even think about maxing out its fans. So that's really impressive. Especially if you're like me and you need your rig to stay quiet so it doesn't bleed through your damn microphone. But hey, native 4K at 60fps is pretty sweet bragging rights. But that's pretty much what it is these days, really, honestly. Because Starfield also supports AMD's fancy AMD Fidelity FX Super Resolution, better known as FSR. An algorithmically driven smart upscaler. One which the Xbox Series X version of the game absolutely relies on to even get to its 30fps cap with a 4K output. Without FSR, <laughs> no, that wouldn't be happening on the Xbox. So my first question was, if I wanted to pop FSR on just, just a little bit, just a, just a smidge, a hair of FSR so I could iron out those two mild problem spots that I hit that otherwise insult my perfect 60 FPS lock everywhere else in the game, what do I need and can I even tell the visual difference when I turn that on? Now. While most FSR equipped games use AMD's scaling presets, usually labeled ultra quality, quality, balanced, performance, and sometimes you'll also see ultra performance. Starfield though, has a user selectable slider that ticks in percentage increments all the way from 50% to 100% scaling. So after a little testing, it turns out all I needed was a 90% scale and even the problem areas were nailed to 60 FPS easily. How does that look? Well, without squinting and leaning in and, you know, recording it and pausing it and zooming in, regular gameplay, I don't know if I could tell. But hey, while we're fiddling with this, what do the equivalents of AMD's normal presets look like? Well, here is 77%, usually labeled as ultra quality, which is a 1.3x scale or a 2954 by 1662 internally rendered resolution for a 4K output. In a 4x crop, uh, you can see that the default sharpening level is a little bit overcooked for this, for this level of scaling. Thankfully, you can turn that sharpening down separately from the scaling. I have left it at default for all of these tests, just for consistency's sake, but do know you can turn it down. Now, a 67% scale want AMD label the quality setting. A 1440p internal render for a 4K output, pretty huge boost of frame rate with this one too. This is the kind of scaling where that sharpening default is designed to help out, but it's still a little too much for my tastes. At a 59% scale, or what other games would call the balanced FSR preset, it is a 1.7x upscale. The sharpening preset level is about right for this one, crisping things up just enough to relatively closely match uh, the native 4K, at least, you know, without zooming in and whatnot. And finally, the 50% scale, or the performance preset, a 1080p internal render for a clean 2x upscale to 4K. Or in other words, three out of every four pixels are generated by the algorithm. But as you can see, on this rig, we're hitting some diminishing returns for frame rate with this setting. There's no significant uplift over the balance setting at all, actually. So here, we have discovered a bottleneck elsewhere. It's no longer the GPU, it's not the CPU, Probably not the memory. Something deeper in the engine. I wonder what that is. But hey, 
why use FSR at all? I mean, if you're upscaling from an internally rendered resolution, why not just run the game at that native resolution we're upscaling from? Surely that'd be cleaner, right? No, no weird artifacting from the algorithm just making up imaginary pixels? Well, here. It's been a long while since I did this test for some side-by-sides, so let's look at what things look like these days. Check out the seams on the ship panels. Oof. And oh my, that extra detail from FSR might be completely faked by math, but <laughs> it is smart math, isn't it? Look at that. And as you might imagine, a native 1080p only exacerbates the issues we just saw and makes it even clearer just how clever FSR really is and why we like it so much more than the older basic upscaling techniques, even if FSR brings with it a few new artifacts in some specific places that are occasionally a bit distracting. I'll take that bargain for everything else it does. Easy choice in my book. So yeah, personally, going forward, I'm going to opt for that slight 90% scale, I think, and also turn that sharpening down a few notches for my own personal gameplay. It's basically invisible, unless I go looking for it, in a, you know, side-by-side -side video zooming in, all that kind of crap. And it is just enough to clean up those few problem areas that slip ever so slightly below my 60 FPS target lock. Now, I also have Game Pass, so I kicked up a save file on my Xbox Series X out of curiosity as well. I suspect we're looking at basically what would be high settings for PC on Xbox, but with FSR set to dynamically scale the resolution as needed to maintain their 30fps target. So I'm not looking at a set scaling. It slides around depending on what it needs to do, I think. That's my impression. Anyway, I haven't had time to do a lot of testing. Probably the Digital Foundry folks will uh, sort that out if they haven't already. But speaking personally, experientially, after already plugging in 30 plus hours into my maxed out native 4K 60fps game on PC, I can very easily see and feel the difference on Xbox. But you know what? In all honesty, it's not as bad as I initially worried it might be. The game looks great, there's no denying that. The 30fps lock and no mouse aim do bother me, but if the Xbox is what you've got, or at least it runs the game better than your PC can, and you can't upgrade your PC just yet, yeah. To all the console peasants, you aren't slumming it too bad on this one. For a change. <laughs> I am, however, still very annoyed that Bethesda still don't include a field of view slider, and I had to do it manually by editing a goddamn any file, just like I had to do with Fallout 4, and just like I had to do with Skyrim. Bethesda, do you know what year it is? For crying out loud. The game has at least managed not to crash on me yet, so that's an improvement for Bethesda. So, linked down below, you'll find the uh, video for the PC build and talking about the other recommended specs and what you do and don't need for various performance levels at various resolutions. And of course, the video where I got Starfield running quite nicely on the ROG Ally. I'd be chuffed if you give them a watch. I'm uh, reasonably proud of those videos, I suppose. <laughs> I did all right. I worked hard on them. In any case, thank you for making it to the end of this video. And thank you as always to the patrons scrolling above, who's above me on support is extraordinary. It's astronomical, I guess to use an appropriate term. Thank you very much for your attention. Hopefully you found this video interesting. I am Blunting, and I'll catch you next time.